Okay, hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our panel discussion on art as a form of resistance, the power of music and visual art. My name is Rif Arbed and I will be the moderator for today's panel. Um, before we begin, I just wanted to send our deepest condolences to the family of Hamad al Jilani, who is a Palestinian artist that unfortunately passed away yesterday after a battle with cancer. Um, Hamad was an active member of the community and respected and loved by many, and a friend of one of our panelists today, um, of Hafez. So, Allah yirhamo and uh, again, our condolences to his family and friends, and may his voice live on through his art, inshallah. Um, so in our panel discussion today, uh, it's my hope that we can challenge ourselves to think deeper and more critically about what resistance means and the different ways that one can resist and be a positive change maker in this world. And we want to try and offer you a wider perspective on just how multifaceted resistance can be. So our format is going to be, um, I'll do brief int introductions of the panelists, and then we'll hear opening statements from each one. And one of our panelists will be speaking in Arabic. So if anyone needs translation, please be sure to check out the instructions in the chat box. There should be a link. And then after our opening remarks, we'll have um, what, what I look forward to, a really vibrant discussion. And this should last about 25 minutes. And then we're gonna open up the floor for Q&A, uh, which should be an additional 15 minutes. So if you have any questions or comments, please type them in the chat box as they come to your mind. Um, afterwards, we'll conclude and then ask each panelist to share their own personal vision of uh, for Palestine by finishing the sentence, I imagine. So we want to also encourage you in the audience to complete that statement and maybe write what you come up with in the chat box. So our panelists today are Rami Yunus, um, Malak Matar, who will be joining us in a little bit, and Hafiz Omar. Rami is a Palestinian writer and cultural activist with an, with an impressive history in building and creating activist movements, political consulting, and writing and editing for various news publications. He was a visiting fellow at Harvard Divinity School. He's one of the co-founders of the very unique Palestine Music Expo. And he's now taking on the world of film by co-directing and producing a sci-fi documentary film. So welcome to Rami. Thank you. Um, Hafiz Omar is an award-winning artist and human rights defender. He completed a master's degree in arts and politics at Goldsmiths University. And his work has been widely used on posters and in campaigns. And actually, he was arrested last year by the Israeli occupation forces, where they interrogated him specifically about his artwork and publications on social media. And he was just released this April after being imprisoned for 13 months without trial. So alhamdulillah, salama to you, Hafiz. Thank you so much. We're grateful to have you with us here today. And then, um, Malak Matar is a Palestinian artist from Gaza, and she's currently attending university in Turkey. She first began her art journey at the young age of 13, and now she's recognized both locally and internationally, where her art has been exhibited um, in individual and group exhibitions around the world. And she most recently completed an extensive speaking tour in the US and held a solo and group exhibition in Washington, DC. So thank you to all of our panelists for joining us today. And um, let's go ahead and start with our opening statements. And Rami, we can start with you. Uh, thank you, Arif. Thank you for having me. I'm um, excited. Um, so I'll start by, I'll, I'll keep it very, very brief and short. I'll start by, a, what is cultural activism or cultural resistance to me? Uh, so maybe it's because of my political background, but the way I see cultural activism or resistance, and to me, these are the same things, 
uh, isn't just about using arts and our culture as a form of uh, resistance. Any form of uh, medium we can use uh, uh, to counter uh, attempts at cultural erasure, cultural segregation, uh, uh, or to keep our narrative alive is to me a form of cultural uh, uh, resistance. Um, um, we started the Palestine Music Expo back in 2017 without realizing what we were doing. Uh, within, within a couple of months, we understood that the Palestine Music Expo was um, a classic form of cultural, uh, cultural resistance. We were able to get delegates from the music industry, from the worldwide music industry, uh, uh, into Palestine uh, because it's easier to talk to people when you use the language of music. When you tell them, come meet Palestinian musicians, come meet Palestinian artists. It's not just about coming to Palestine to see walls and checkpoints and, and, and refugee camps. Uh, uh, it's to meet artists. And sadly, unfortunately, um, we Palestinians nowadays are dehumanized. Uh, it is considered a very radical act to humanize ourselves. I'm, I'm saying this, um, th th this, is, this is the reality. This is the, this is the reality we live in. Uh, so any form of art that humanizes us uh, is, is considered now a form of, of, of cultural activism or resistance. Uh, so I said I will keep this brief. Uh, we will go into details further on. So okay, I'll be quiet thank now. you so much. <laughs> I, I think that's a great point. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk too much, but that's a great point about um, it is a radical act to humanize us. And, and it's so important for us to start taking back that narrative and showing our humanity. So thank you. Um, okay, let's go. Hi, Malak. Um, we can go ahead and go start with you if you want to do your opening statement. <coughs> oh, Malak, we can't, we can't hear you. Do you have it? Is it on mute? Oh, there we okay, go. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right, thank you so much. Um, so first of all, um, my name is Malak. I, as you of course said, um, I started painting in the last aggression on Gaza Strip. And the first time I started painting, it was more of a self-expression as someone who's experiencing a very heavy and terrifying um, moments of explosion, of losing life and fear. So it was more, art for me was more as a, a, as a refuge. And since I started uh, posting my artwork online, I thought how important it is that we use art to express and to talk about our struggles as Palestinians in, in a media that is not in our side, it's supporting the occupation. So I started documenting my life through my artwork uh, without adding anything, it's just my experience, uh, my life. And indeed I was able to reach bigger audience with time, telling people more about our life as Palestinian, not only from a political perspective, but also humanitarian. And I would say I was able to succeed a little bit in changing some people's opinions about uh, Palestine, viewing it from a war zone place, to a place full of life, uh, full of talents and full of dreams. So this is the brief. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mala. Um, Hafez, your turn, go ahead. Uh, بداية بدي بس أتقدم بالتعزي من الصديق محمد الجولاني ومن شعبنا الفلسطيني على خسارته لهاي القامة الفنية الفذة هذا الإنسان الجميل والرائع واللي ما نحكي عن المقاومة وعن عن الفن ومثل ما أشار رامي لدور الفن في تثبيت الرواية وفي مقاومة محاولة محو الهوية الفلسطينية بنلاقي إنه محمد من الناس اللي قدر رغم تجربته اللي للأسف ما أخذت مداها كما يجب قدر إنه يترك بصمة كتير مهمة في في هاي السردية خاصة إنه محمد فنان مقدسي وإحنا بنقدر نتخيل وضعنا وضع الهوية الفلسطينية في القدس والدور اللي كان واحد مثل محمد عم بيلعبه كفنان وهذه شغلة يعني شغلة تانية أنا ما أخذت جوائز عملياً بشكل رسمي أنا شوي أنتي استابلشمنت 
جائزتي الشيء اللي انا بعتبره هو مكافاتي كانت دائما لما كنت انا بسافر وتحديدا في المخيمات الفلسطينيه وين في تجمعات فلسطينيه جائزتي دائما كانت انه بشوف البوسترات تبعتي معلقه على الحيطان او الناس مبتنينها فبالنسبه لي هذا انا كان اهم من اي جائزه فنيه ممكن اي فنان يحصل عليها لما بيقدر يشوف انه الرساله تبعته واصله لبيوت الناس ولقلوبها. بالحديث عن الفن والمقاومه بدي اقتبس حابب اقتبس من غسان كنفاني اللي كثير حكى عن دور الفن والثقافه في 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 المقاومه. في اقتباس شهير اللي انا بعتبر انه هذا الاقتباس هو احد الـ 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 الاشياء اللي بتوجهني كفنان. لما حكى انه ليست المقاومه المسلحه قشره هي ثمره لزرعه ضاربه جذورها عميقا في الارض، واذا كان التحرير ينبع من فوهه البندقيه فان البندقيه ذاتها تنبع من اراده التحرير، واراده التحرير ليست سوى النتاج الطبيعي والمنطقي والحتمي للمقاومه بمعناها الواسع. المقاومه على صعيد الرفض وعلى صعيد التمسك الصلب بالجذور والمواقف. ومثل هذا النوع من المقاومة يتخذ شكله الرائد في العمل السياسي والعمل الثقافي. يعني بالنهاية احنا هون بنحكي عن المقاومة بشكل أساسي كفكرة. بتعدد الأشكال سواء مقاومة شعبية، مسلحة، ثقافية هي بالأساس فكرة. وفكرة جماعية. وهون بيجي دور الفن وتجربتي الشخصية أنا من مواليد 83 في الانتفاضة الأولى 89 بتعرفوا كطفل عمره ست سنين بلشت أوعى على الدنيا والدتي لما كانت بتحاول إنها تشرح لي عن فلسطين وليش إحنا في منع تجول ليش إحنا تحت احتلال كانت تستعمل بوست كاردز لفنانين فلسطينيين سليمان منصور نبيل عناني تيسير بركات واحدة منهم اللي يعني إشي مثل هيك إذا في المشاهد يشوف هذه كانت بوست كاردز تنطبع وتنباع في في الاسواق وفي المكتبات، وانا كطفل تعرفت على الفن وتعرفت على فلسطين من خلال هذه الاعمال. فهذا يعني بشكل بسيط الدور اللي انا عشته في حياتي يعني لعبه الفن في حياتي في تعريفي بهويتي وبواقعي اللي اللي انا موجود. من هون اجت ممارستي الفنيه او اجت فكرتي عن الفن. إيه دائما كنت بامن انه الفن هو الاداه القادره انها تصنع هذا الوعي اللي من خلاله الناس زي مثل ما حكى رامي مره ثانيه بدها تقاوم اقصائها يعني احنا ما بنحكي بس عن عن الشكل العنيف للمقاومه هذا احد الاشكال لكن احنا يعني يعني المقاومه اذا بننظر لها كفكره مجتمعيه شامله بتتضمن كيف بنعيش كيف بناكل كيف بنشرب كيف بنشتغل كيف بنتواصل مع العالم كيف بنعبر عن انفسنا كيف بنواجه الـ الـ الاحتلال بشكل مباشر إيه، قدرت احس انه الفن إيه، اداه كثير مهمه في تشكيل هذا الوعي اللي بيسمح لنا انه احنا نرفض الاضطهاد نرفض الاقصاء إيه، إيه، نحاول انه نوصل لحاله من المساواه مع باقي البشر فمن خلال هاي الافكار عن الفن وعن علاقته في المقاومة أنا كانت ممارستي الفنية من خلال أنه أنا بعمل ملصقات سياسية بشكل مستقل بنشرها على السوشيال ميديا بشكل دوري بشكل سريع فاعل مع الأحداث اللي موجودة على الأرض واللي من خلالها بحاول أستغل قدرة الفن على أنه يوصل رسالة سريعة يشحن المشاهد عاطفياً يحفزه لأنه يتخذ أو فعل باتجاه الحدث القائم فهيك أنا بتخيل العلاقة بين الفن والمقاومة في بلدنا اليوم إذا بدنا نكون واقعيين وعلميين إحنا في مرحلة اللي بحاجة لكل أنواع الجهود لأنه نرفع الظلم الواقع عن فلسطين وعن شعبها وبتخيل الفن بقدرته على أنه يوصل لقلوب الناس مش بس بفلسطين سواء موسيقى او سواء فنون بصريه او سواء شعر او سواء يعني بكل اشكال الفنون والممارسات الثقافيه احنا قادرين نوصل الرساله عن فلسطين لكل العالم لكل الثقافات اللي احنا عمليا بحاجتهم 
انهم يوقفوا مع قضيتنا ويدعموها Thank you so much. And I, and I think what I take from everything that you guys said is that art and music and culture are all a new language, or not even new, it's, it's a language that we're using to reach more people. Um, and I think it's more, it's a, it's a better way of reaching the masses than just traditional political talk. Um, because it, it tugs at people's emotions. We all have those emotions within us, regardless of culture or what country we're in. Um, so I think this is a really good way to start off our discussion. Um, I wanted to kind of go deeper into the perceptions of art and music within the Palestinian community. So obviously we're not a monolith. Um, and I don't want to speak on behalf of all Palestinians in the diaspora, but I do feel like those of us not in Palestine, we really cling to uh, Palestinian music and Palestinian art and Palestinian musicians and Palestinian artists. We really cling to them. And I'm just curious how this scene is perceived within Palestine. And we're so lucky to have all of you on the panel because we get all the perspective from around the, con the country. And um, I just want to see, do people there see it as a really important part of the resistance? And, and not just the art and music that deals with our national cause, but just art and music in general as a cultural practice, um, especially when it tackles maybe sensitive local community issues. Um, what's the discussion like on the ground in Palestine? And anybody can can start. Go ahead, Ron. Oh wait, I think I think you're on mute. Thank <laughs> you for that. Uh, yeah, so I don't mind starting. Um, I can I can okay. I wanna I wanna answer that with a couple of examples. Uh, in 2017, at the end of 2017, I had a, a crowdfunding campaign uh, uh, for my film. Uh, the film that is still in uh, uh, production, uh, my sci-fi documentary. Um, I, we were aiming, uh, me and my co-director, we were aiming mainly towards Americans or uh, 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 Palestinians in the day, or, or people in the diaspora, you know, leftists in general. I was pleasantly surprised to see that more than 50%, around 60% of the people who gave us money for the film were Palestinian. So in recent years, you see a shift uh, towards uh, uh, the importance, and people people are realizing the importance of supporting uh, local Palestinian initiatives and and and, and the Palestinian uh, arts and culture. Mm -hmm. uh, 2017 will be remembered as uh, one of the most important years, uh, uh, in, in that sense, we, the third generation of the Nakba survivors, are not afraid anymore. I'm to I'm, I'm I'm mainly talking about right now 48 years, Palestinian citizens of Israel, but our effect also our work also affects. Uh, uh, other uh, cultural areas in Palestine. Um, so, so the Haifa Independent Film Festival uh, was taking place, uh, and a couple of uh, weeks after, the first ever Palestine Music Expo took place in Ramallah. Uh, yes, the co-founders are, are, are all uh, 48ers, but uh, the event happens in in in, in Ramallah. So, to see these two important in the cultural initiatives taking place, you know, at the same, almost at the same time, the same year, uh, uh, organized by people from the same clique, you know, young filmmakers, young musicians, young writers, young activists, uh, was truly something uh, uh, amazing. Uh, however, uh, if we are talking about, I think, um, um, I don't think all communities uh, fully real, and that's totally understood, uh, uh, fully realize the importance of supporting arts and culture. And 2018, a week before the second Palestine Music Expo, uh, the Great Return March in Gaza started. So if you guys remember, uh, we had in Gaza the first day, uh, we had 14, I think, Arbatash uh, al-Shahid, 14 martyrs. Uh, and that happened uh, a week before the Palestine Music Expo. So we didn't know what to do. We were freaking out. Mm -hmm. but, but then we said, then we figured, you know what? What they did in Gaza, what the, what the Palestinian refugees did in Gaza, you know, marching to the border, uh, uh, um, uh, dreaming about, you know, practicing the right of return. Uh, we are actually completing them. We are doing something that supports them. They support us and we support them. You know, it's a circle. 
uh, and this is how we saw it. So we said, you know what? No, we're gonna go on stage each and every night, and this is not a rave. This is a form of cultural resistance. The Israelis are trying to erase our culture. They are trying to erase our very own existence. Screw that. We will go on stage. We will celebrate our arts, our culture, our say, our narrative, and we will support the Gazans. We will support the people of, uh, of Gaza. So uh, a lot of people from Gaza uh, were in touch with us and uh, they thought it was uh, uh, really moving. Uh, um, uh, we, we dedicated uh, uh, BMX 2018 to them. Uh, however, some people didn't like it uh, uh, and didn't think that it was appropriate that people were dying and they thought we will just like celebrating and dancing and whatever. So, so you know, and, 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 and here it, uh, this is where it gets tricky. When someone says to me, Musika Haram, it's very hard for us to communicate. It's very hard for me to, uh, uh, to explain why our work is actually not Haram, but it's benefiting the Palestinian cause. A person like that won't understand uh, that uh, uh, in, 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 in 2018, we had Brian Eno, one of the most important uh, musicians of modern, uh, in modern history coming to Palestine to meet Palestinian musicians and to learn more, of, more about the Palestinian cause. Because this person believed that musika uh, is haram. So this person won't understand that Brian Eno will go back to the UK uh, 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 being one of the biggest heavyweights in the music industry there. Uh, and he won't understand the, uh, the influence this man would have on the Palestinian uh, 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 cause. So it's, it's really tricky. I think we're getting there, but at the same time, we see that a lot of uh, our communities in Palestine, we still need, we, the cultural activists, have two responsibilities. The first responsibility, which is very clear to all of us, is to uh, uh, use uh, uh, our art and culture as a form of resistance uh, and show the world we're still here, we're still alive. The second responsibility is towards our own communities. This is our work to talk to people in disenfranchised communities, oppressed communities, people who can't, don't even have access to live music, don't, don't have access to, uh, to community centers, to, to, to places where they can actually uh, consume art. Uh, so it's our uh, uh, job to make art uh, uh, available to them and to help educate our people on the importance of cultural resistance and, and arts in general. Thank you. Does anybody else want to go ahead, Papa? Well, uh, أنا كمان نسيت أحكي بجوز هذولني أنسى أحكيها بالتعريف الحالي إنه أنا كمان عضو بفرقة الفنون الشعبية الفلسطينية اللي عمرها تقريبا 43 42 سنة اليوم واللي هي فرقة بالأساس قائمة على التطوع طبعا من الاسم إحنا بنحكي عن فرقة الفنون الشعبية الفلسطينية هي مش بالضبط أو ليست فقط فرقة فلكلور كمان تشتغل فن معاصر أو رقص معاصر مبني على الرقص الفولكلور الفلسطيني وكان علي يعني فرصة انه اتجول مع الفرقة في كتير محلات حوالين العالم وانه حتى بفلسطين انه نعمل عروض ونتجول في مختلف مناطق فلسطين بس الـ الـ احدى القصص القديمة اللي انا ما كانت على زمني في الانتفاضة الاولى كمان ونحن نحكي عن عن زمن مختلف عن اليوم اذا بدنا نيجي نشوف كيف شعبنا بيطلع على الموسيقى وعلى حضورها ودورها كانت الفرقه ممنوعه من العرض من الحاكم العسكري للاحتلال الاسرائيلي ممنوع انها تعمل حفلات ففي احدى المرات الفرقه اصرت تعمل حفله وفي القدس وعملوها في ملعب وحاوط الستيج من كل النواحي 360 درجة كانت الناس بالالاف عندنا دوكيومنتيشن لهذا الشيء للصور انه الناس دافعت عن الحفلة هذه عن حفلة الدبكة هذه زي ما انها بتدافع عن واحد من 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 الاشياء المقدسة او الاشياء اللي كثير عزيزة عليها في وجه الاحتلال نفس الشيء اليوم احنا لما بنروح وبنعرض بنعرض يعني الفرقة سنويا بتختار انها تعرض في منطقة يعني مش في المناطق المركزية اللي هو رام الله أو بيت لحم أو القدس بتروح على قرية مثل كفر لاقف في قلقيلية أو على جنوب الخليل أو على بورين تحديدا في المناطق المهددة بالمصادرة أو اللي فيه نوع من التوتر السياسي فيها وبتعرض 
الاقبال الجماهيري الضخم اللي احنا بنشوفه والتفاعل مع الـ الـ الرقص والموسيقى واحنا هون لسه بنحكي في موضوع اكثر حساس اللي هو احنا ما بنحكي بس موسيقى احنا بنحكي عن شباب وشابات بيمسكوا ايديهم بايدين بعض بيطلعوا على المسرح وبرقصوا وبيأدوا رقصات على على اغاني مختلفه بعتقد انه الفرقه كاحد المنتجين الثقافيين بفلسطين قدرت انها تقاوم هذا الخطاب اللي بيحكي انه الرقص والموسيقى حرام وانها تخلي الرقص والموسيقى مهم لشعبنا ضمن الظروف اللي احنا موجودين فيها ضمن الظروف اللي احنا فيها تحت الاحتلال فبالتالي بحس انه لا شعبنا مش تماما غريب عن عن الدور تبع الموسيقى تحديدا والرقص لكن بضل دائما دور الفنان انه كيف يختار السياق اللي يقدم من خلاله الـ الـ الفن تبعه يعني كيف بالضبط هون كانت السمارت تشويس تبع رامي في 2007 في, في وقت ما كان الـ 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 الحرب صارت في 2017 مش الحرب الهجوم على غزه مش لازم الفنان يعتبر انه فنه هو شيء زائد عن حاجه الناس في واقعنا او انه اذا في شهداء انا مش لازم اعمل فن مش لازم اعمل موسيقى انا هيك بثبت هاي الفكره وبخلي الناس تعتقد انه هذا الفن هو شيء لاكشري او انه شيء ثانوي بينما الخيار اللي اخذوه هم لا بعزز انه لا احنا الفن هو احد الاشكال اللي احنا برضه بنواجه فيها هذا الواقع مظبوط يعني ما في شيء بيرتقي لمستوى الدم ما في شيء بيرتقي لمستوى انه الناس عم عم بتموت بتحاول انها تعمل تغيير حقيقي من خلال تضحيتها بحياتها لكن هاي الادوات اللي بايدينا اللي احنا تو ماكسمايز انه نكبر دور هاي التضحيه هدول الناس اذا احنا ما حكينا عنهم اللي استشهدوا في الموسيقى في في الصوره في البينتينج في في الشعر ما راح ما راح نقدر نحقق الغايه اللي هم عشان نستشهدوا فبالتالي يعني بحس انه بيعتمد على على كيف احنا بنحط الحدث الفني او العمل الفني في حياه الناس اللي هم موجودين في مناطق مهمشه، مناطق مهدده بالاستيطان، مناطق بوكلها الجدار، تحت احتلال مباشر او لاجئين لا زالوا في الشتات في مخيمات او متشتتين في الـ في الـ في, يعني في دول العالم بحس انه دائما دائما لا الفن والثقافه شعبنا بحاجه دائما لهذا لهذا النوع من الاداء احنا ما ننسى انه مشكلتنا بالاساس مشكله هويه في ال 48 مش بس انسرقت الارض وانسرق وانسرق السياق التاريخي تبعنا كمان عشان تزبط مع اللي احتلونا كان ضروري بالنسبه لهم انه يحكوا ما في فلسطيني في شيء اسمه فلسطين في شيء اسمه رقص فلسطيني في شيء اسمه موسيقى في شيء اسمه تراث بصري فبالتالي لا مهم جدا وحتى لو الحرب قائمه وحتى لو الـ 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 في شهداء وفي في دم الفن والموسيقى ومختلف انواع التعبير الفني هي كمان سلاح واداه للمواجهه. Absolutely, absolutely. And I kind of want to pivot, pivot from that to Mela because you've talked about how you use art as, as a freedom. So maybe you can elaborate more on that. How is it a source of freedom for you? And how does that um, translate to, the, to others who see your art? That's a good question. I actually grew up in in Gaza, which is known to be like one of the most conservative uh, city in Palestine. Um, I grew up with a few kinds of pressure, which was also a society pressure of being um, a woman in Gaza and also uh, the pressure of being under siege, of uh, living with a lot of injustice, like not living with electricity, with uh, proper water and etc. So. For me, art was a way that I could feel free because at the end, um, you are not free to go, you're not free to travel, you're not free to express. Um, like, like freely as a woman, it was a little bit difficult. So for me, having a white canvas that I could paint whatever I want was um, a big pleasure and a big sort of freedom. So after I traveled to the other part of Palestine, I went to Jerusalem, I went to the West Bank, it was pretty a very great experience to be able to connect uh, with other artists from different places in Palestine. I also visited Bethlehem, which was uh, was a pretty a rich experience 
seeing the artwork and the upper tide wall. Uh, so for us as Gazans artists, it's pretty difficult not being able to travel, which is a very unique artist or any creative person to have throughout the creative process. So art will always remain kind of freedom. As long as you have the freedom to think, to paint, it's, it's a freedom that I would always cherish. That's amazing. I mean, I, mean um, I think it's so incredible how we use our art and our music as a language to speak to the outside world, but also as a way that connects us. Because from your story, you're seeing how we're so segregated, yet we can use our art and our music to still keep us binded to each other and to connect us to each other. And that is a form of resistance because the idea is to separate us. You know, and, and exactly. through art and music and cultural, um, all forms of cultural practice, we're able to still maintain that strength together. Um, gosh, we only have, uh, we don't have much time left. So I will ask, I will try and open up one more question with you guys before I get to the Q&A in the chat box. Um, I'm really curious about the impact that social media has had in this realm. I know it's had some positive impacts for you guys in terms of going viral or being able to share your, your work with the world, but have you experienced any sort of negative repercussions from it or how, how do we use social media to our advantage to help perpetuate our, our art and our music? Go ahead, Hawkins, go ahead. Well, uh, for me, sorry. <laughs> بال يعني انا كنت بشتغل برسم وجداريات وبوسترز اللي بدنا نطبعهم على ورق وكان لازم دائما في حدا اللي هو يمول هاي العمليه جهه معينه تطلب التصميم او تمول تصميم فكان الانتشار تبع الاعمال الفنيه تحديدا الملصقات السياسيه كان صعب او كان محدود بعد السوشيال صار الاشي انتشاره سريع وواسع ومؤثر بشكل كثير اكبر لكن صادفنا مشكله مع السوشيال ميديا انه صار في عندنا نوع من النضال الافتراضي انه انا بعتقد انه السوشيال ميديا والتواصل الاجتماعي هي ساحه نضال وانا اذا بعمل شير اذا بعمل لايك اذا بحكي شوي عن موضوع بالتالي انا دوري انتهى بحس انه هذا الايموشنال تشارج اللي انا عندي خلص خلصته اي بوستد سمثينج اون لاين سو اي توك ان اكشن اند ذاتس ات يعني فور ان اكزامبل وين يو يوز تو 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 كول فور فور ان اكشن فور ا ستاند في في الببليك سبيس كنا نطلع على الفيسبوك في 100 يعني في 400 500 واحد اتندنج لما بتروحي على الـ على الايفنت بتلاقي نفس ال 30 شخص مم. فالمشكله انه السوشيال ميديا يعني ال ال وهي الطبيعه البشريه انه انا اي جيت تشارج ايموشنلي بيكوز اوف ان ايفنت سمثينج اند اي فيل اي نيد تو ميك ان اكشن سو اي وود جست لايك ريليس ذات ستريس اند اند تشينج بيفور زمان كنت انا اطلع على الشارع تلاقي ناس اهتمت عملت مظاهره لحالها بشكل عفوي وعملت شيء اليوم هذا الشيء انتقل انه يصير على السوشيال ميديا بطل انه يصير في الواقع، بطل يعني المكان اللي احنا بحاجه انه نغير فيه ما عم نغير فيه، احد الاسباب انا برايي انه احنا عم عم نعمل هذا الديسشارج على على السوشيال ميديا على السوشيال ميديا الشحنه العاطفيه هاي احنا بنفرغها هناك وخلاص يعني بنحس انه احنا عملنا شيء، فهذه واحده من الشغلات السلبيه اللي انا بحسها من موضوع السوشيال ميديا، طبعا السوشيال ميديا كثير في لها ايجابيات من ناحيه انها بتسمح لنا ننتشر ونوصل صوتنا بس كمان اذا بنلاحظ انه السوشيال ميديا بلاتفورمز ار ار فايتنج اجينست اس يعني زوم بيمنع محاضرات لنشطاء فلسطينيين ولمناضلين فلسطينيين فيسبوك واقف لنا على البوست اذا بنكتب اي كلمه بروح البوست فبنلاقي انه السوشيال ميديا بلاتفورمز ادابتد الاوكيوبيشن ناريتيف عن الاشياء كيف الاوكيوبيشن بيعرف الاشياء حتى بيساعد يعني انه الاوكيبيشن يعني لما احنا بنروح على المحاكم وانا كنت شاهد يعني كان في ناس معي في السجن عم بتحاكموا على عدد اللايكات يعني الاحتلال المدعي العام مدعي عام محكمه 
وبحكي للمتهم بيحكي عن تينيجر من من الدهيشه من المخيم انه انت حطيت صوره شهيد واجاك عليها 80 لايك هذا بهدد الامن فانه اه يعني للاسف غير انه التكنيكاليتي تبعت السوشيال ميديا عم فيها شويه نيجاتيفيتي كمان السوشيال ميديا بلاتفورمز كومبلسيت مع مع الاوكيوبيشن ولحد الان احنا مش قادرين نعمل كامبيننج صح مش قادرين نعمل بشكل او باخر بريشر على السوشيال ميديا بلاتفورمز انه يا اخي ما تتبنوا خطابنا كونوا محايدين يعني خلوا الناس تحكي عن حالها وهذا الحكي اذا بدنا نرجع سوري بس بدي اكمل هاي النقطه لانه هاي طلعت عليها من في حرب غزه في 2014 لعب لعبه السوشيال ميديا دور كثير كبير في انه العالم يعرف حقيقه الشيء اللي بيصير وانا كنت في محاضره لمنظمه يهوديه في امريكا حكوا عن كيف انه تحديدا الجاليه اليهوديه في امريكا لما شافت ايش بصير في 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 غزه مش ما شافت الاوفيشال ناراتيف شافت الفيسبوك كثير ناس غيرت من من مواقفها تجاه الاحتلال وتجاه الفلسطينيين اللي هم كانوا اصلا بيدعموا الاحتلال لانهم بيعرفوش غير الناراتيف اللي بيقدموا الاحتلال بس لما شافوا الصور والاشياء اللي طلعت في حرب غزه في 2014 قرروا انه لا احنا ما بندعم هذا الشيء، احنا ما كنا بنعرف انه هيك بيصير. فمن يوميها بلش السوشيال ميديا يعني بلش الكيان الصهيوني يشتغل على موضوع السوشيال ميديا، ايش بصح للفلسطيني يحكي على السوشيال ميديا، ايش الصور اللي بتطلع على السوشيال ميديا من فلسطين. فهذا كمان بفرجي الايجابيات والسلبيات تبعت التواصل الاجتماعي وكيف احنا ممكن يعني نوظفه في في نضالاتنا وكيف احنا لازم كمان انه نضغط على على السوشيال ميديا بلاتفورمز انها ما تصادر صوتنا وما تصادر حقنا حل اوكي اي يس اي وود لاف تو توك اباوت ذس ايفن مور اتس سو سو امبورتنت بيكوز اتس سو كومبلكس بس وي هاف ليس ذان 10 مينيتس ليف سو ام غانا تراي ان جيت ان سم اوف ذا كيو ان اي ام جست ريلي كويك هاو فيز بيبل وونت تو نو وير ذي كان جيت يور شيرت فروم If you want to give a quick, um, <laughs> well, uh, okay, uh, you can they can go on uh, Instagram on Habbar Prints and they can order from over there. Uh, we were based in Ramallah and we print in this Habbar Prints, H A B B A R Prints. Okay, um, one of the questions is how to reach a balance between our profession as artists. with a huge uh, variety of art styles and preserve the elements of cultural identity. Maybe Malak, you can um, touch on that. So how do you balance just being an artist with all kinds of styles you want to do versus preserving your culture? Well, well me as an individual, I believe that we really have to preserve um, like to preserve our uh, Palestinian culture and our art uh, but I do also encourage that we can be innovative in our ways of expressing ourselves to not really be um, traditional in the way we paint but also to be present uh, with what's going on in the art market and the art scene nowadays so for me I like be what you want to be express yourself the way you like. and also have this responsibility that we need to show cause a showcase our culture and our struggle as Palestinians. Rami and, and then how I, yeah. I I absolutely second the Mala. Uh, I 100% agree. Um, um three years ago uh, we had a meeting of Palestinian musicians or the bunch of people from the music industry and we were sitting with the uh, one of the former uh, editors of Billboard magazine which is one of the most important uh, music magazines uh, in the music industry mm -hmm. and one of the musicians asked should we sing in English or Arabic <laughs> what language should we use in our songs and then uh, uh, the editor the former editor who's Canadian uh told them that in his opinion they should only, only sing in arabic or or maybe it doesn't even matter what uh, which language they sing in as long as they sing in the, in the in the language they're most comfortable in and they can express themselves best meaning we as palestinian artists 
have a very unique story to tell. No other artist on earth can tell. It doesn't really matter which language and which medium, which way we choose to tell that story, as long as we tell that story. Another very smart Palestinian writer told me once in the past, she said, when you want to write a love story, write a love story, yeah? Don't write about the occupation. Don't write about walls. Write about, write lo uh, about the love story. Uh, and don't worry about the occupation, the political reality. It will be there in the subtext because it's part of us. It's part of the experience of being a Palestinian. So I would say there's a room for all. There's a room for all artists, uh, uh, people who are considered to be traditional artists, people who are engaged in traditional art form, as, uh, um, uh, as also people who are engaged in more experimental or less traditional, something we call musika badili, al-fannil badil, cinema badili. So uh, there's room for all. Yeah. Awesome. And, and how is it, if you want to add, we have like one minute and then I have to wrap up. Well, one minute. Uh, this is our, for me personally, this is my daily struggle. And this is the daily struggle. We talk about a story that has been more than 100 years. It has been talked about in all the ways. And I think it's important to me as a person, how I can respond to القضية الفلسطينية بطرق جديدة وكأنه يعني يعني أنا مثلا ليش بحب مثلا كثير غسان كنفاني؟ لأنه كل ما بقرأ غسان كنفاني بحس إنه النكبة صارت امبارح. يا yeah. yeah. يعني بحس هاي مهمتي إنه أنا كيف هذا الكوز اللي اللي كل الناس زهقت منه أخليه فريش، أخليه أرجنت، أخليه هلا أنا بدي آخذ أكشن. هذا يعني الديلي الديلي تشالنج تبعي. إنه لما بدي أرسم لما بدي أكتب لما بدي أعمل إشي بحط في راسي إنه هذا الإشي إله كتي وشعبنا تحديدا زهق وتعب من كتر معانا منه كيف أنا لا بدي أخليه يحس إنه لا it just happened the fourth day هيك أنا بكون يعني بحس إنه أنا نجحت هلا كيف <تصفيق> يعني من اللي حكته ملك من اللي حكى رامي أكيد يعني كتير كتير وفي كتير فنانين يعني مع انه الاشي عمره اكثر من 100 سنه بس لما بنشوفه زي ما حكيت غسان كنفاني زي ما حكيت لما نجي نطلع على لوحات سليمان منصور اسماعيل شموط المرحوم محمد جولاني بتحس انه واو انه هذا الحنين هذا الحب لفلسطين ولشعبها ولكل عنصر من العناصر البصريه اللي بنشوفها وكانه بنولد اليوم. And I think that's a struggle that we all face as Palestinians is how do we how do we live just to live and how do we um, innovate and, you know, and do what we want to do while also uh, staying true to our history and our identity. And I think you guys all made such a good point is we can do all that and still tear, tell our story because that is who we are and it's going to show through our work, no matter what work we, we do. And I think that's a really um, good way to wrap up. So I don't think I have, okay, we have two minutes. So I'll just go ahead and ask you guys to conclude um, by answering what we talked about before. You know, the whole goal of the summit was to bring us together as dreamers and doers and see how we can radically imagine um, a future for Palestine. So I'll ask you guys each to uh, complete the phrase, I imagine. Go ahead, Malak. What do you imagine for oh. Well, like I have faith in humanity and I imagine like uh, a free Palestine and free Palestinians of all the struggles we've been through, the burden of uh, the burden and yet the beauty of being Palestinian. I mean, we hold uh, the history on our hearts and our shoulders and this is a struggle we live no matter where we go in the world. Uh, so I really imagine that one day we will be free from this pain of seeing our land getting stolen, settlements being built, and and feeling the feeling of helplessness. Mm -hmm. So I hope one day I will not have to tell my kids what I gone through, but a better future of how Palestine uh, freed itself and liberated through us Palestinians, writers, artists, um, doctors, and all. Professions. So, this is it. Okay. Um, Rami? 
Well, I imagine Palestine liberated, but to liberate Palestine, it's not just about uh, uh, resisting the occupation and going head to head with the occupation. It's about liberating our mind. Mm -hmm. Our job as activists, as artists, as people who support the art is to do that exactly. Art is about raising questions, not answering them. Uh, art is about liberating our mind, it's about being surprising. But in order for us to do that, in order for Malak to be able to keep uh, being able to create and to Hafiz uh, uh, and to other filmmakers and musicians and painters and dancers, we need support. Mm -hmm. We as Palestinians need to support each other more. If you know any Palestinians with means, I know a lot of Palestinian cultural initiatives, a lot of Palestinian arts initiatives, and they're all underfunded. Uh, uh, now, more than ever, uh, the Palestinian arts community needs more support in order to keep existing and, and in order to keep resisting. Okay, and Hafez, go ahead before they... Well, I imagine uh, the refugees marching toward back toward the borders and entering to Palestine and breaking the prison's doors, basically. So these are the two main images I, I imagine for Palestine in the future. The refugees will come back and then Inshallah. break the door. Thank you guys so much. This was such a nice panel. I wish we had more time. Um, I have to conclude now. Uh, for, for anyone staying for the rest of the summit, we are going to be broadcasting some of Muhammad Jalani's artwork after this panel if you want to check it out. And please stay tuned for the next panel on mental health and COVID-19. Thank you guys. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.